In this video, we're going to get a quick take on naming cells. When you name a cell, it allows you to use that name in functions and formulas instead of using cell addresses. So the easiest way to name a single cell is just by clicking in that cell and then moving into the upper left into the name box and clicking there to highlight the column and row address. Once it's highlighted, you can just start typing your name. And these names have to start with a letter and they have to be a single word or somehow they have to have no spaces in them. So if you want to have multiple words, you could do something like put an underscore in to connect two words. Once you've typed the name you want, you just hit enter to make it stick. And then if I move out somewhere else and I start typing, you can see that my named cell pops up as a reference. And then to use it, I can just hit tab. Okay, an alternative to naming a single cell is to name a whole range of cells. So when you have a range of inputs, you may want to name all of them. So what I'm going to do here is move into B3, and then I'm just going to select down to C5. Once the range is selected, I'm going to click on the formula tab. And then right in about the middle here, I'm going to select create from selection. And here we have a few options, but Excel tries to figure out what it is you're trying to do here. And since I've selected two columns and three rows, it's assuming that I want the name to correspond to whatever's in that first column. So we see that it is by default selected left column, but obviously we could choose other options here too. All right, since it's doing what I want it to do, I'm just going to click OK. And if you want to see what happened, we can click on the drop down next to define name and open that dialog box. Now I am working in a Mac, so it's going to look just a little bit different in Windows, but essentially all the same buttons, just the interface looks a little different. And we can see here all of my named cells. And you can also see that that first name I input for C3, it still exists. All right, so if we want to get rid of it, I'm just going to hit minus. In Windows, you're going to select whatever name you want to remove and hit delete. I'll just click OK here. And then we might as well take a look at how to use them in a function. Okay, so I'm just going to start. And the first one is outside temp. All right, and we're going to subtract away from that the cooling rate times the outside temp again minus the fridge temp. All right, and I'm missing a parenthesis here. And then we'll just close it out and finish off that formula. Okay, so that's what the formula looks like using the named cells. Sometimes people like to do this because it's a little bit more descriptive than using cell addresses. Okay, and it's important to note that if I used name cells by default, they act as absolute references. So when I copy that formula down, we'll see that the formula didn't change. Okay, so if we need to make changes, uh, then we would have to go in and edit this formula. Okay, so rather than in the second row it referring to outside temp, we're going to refer to the previous temperature. And uh, the same is true for this outside temp. Okay, but then we should be able to just copy down and see that our formula is behaving as expected. So that should get you started with naming cells.